Woo! Hey guys, how's it going? Sitting in the car here, warming up, just trying to keep warm because it's so cold and windy out here today. It was about 32 degrees when I woke up this morning. So we're gonna get out here and do a little bit of shooting. I wanted to talk to you in the car while I still got a, a little bit of um, some battery and not as much wind. So we're gonna shoot the Primary Arms TA44 ACSS reticled Trigicon one and a half power ACOG. Now I know that's a mouthful. So I get a lot of questions from people saying when I start talking about the ACOGs that are kind of exclusive to Primary Arms, they say, is that a real ACOG or is that something that Primary Arms is actually making? Well, both technically. So it is a real ACOG. Trigicon is making these ACOGs. Anytime you use the word ACOG, Trigicon is behind it, else somebody's probably trying to sell you a fake. Um, but Dimitri, who is the brains behind the ACSS reticle, um, and primary arms are the ones who have the exclusive to us. So they, uh, Dimitri's designed the reticle and it has been um, built and inserted into an ACOG. So I think you have like the best of both worlds there, which is awesome. So now I've shot the ACSS stuff, you guys know on 16 plus inch 5.56 guns out to, um, I wanna say, I don't think we pushed them past 600 yards yet, but they're boringly reliable. So, so much so that this TA44, being that it's a one and a half power, and that it performs very similarly to a red dot, uh, I wanted to put this on a shorter barrel. So this thing, like I said, performs similar to a red dot, one and a half power, but it, so it has all the advantages of a red dot minus the batteries. So it doesn't have any batteries, uses Trigicon and fiber, you're getting BDC holes out to 400, 500 yards, uh, and you've got the um, the auto ranging as well for height and width, and I'll kind of roll in some screenshots here of that stuff, so I'm not gonna really go into all that in this in this video here, but uh, like I said, wanted to shoot it on a shorter 10 and a half inch. Uh, it's my DD Mark 18 upper, and uh, wanted everything to match up. So I've done some punch of numbers in my ballistic calculator using Strelic Pro, using roughly a 30 yard zero with the Chevron tip, which is gonna get me, you know, basically, you know, zero to 300 yards, roughly, at the Chevron tip. Um, my 400 yard and my 500 yard mark should line up, I believe. So we're gonna go test that here now. So I think we'll probably just kind of, you know, start up close and we'll step it back out and just see how we can do and see how it works. So anyway, before I get out and do some shooting, and if you guys have any questions, you can always obviously put those down below like usual or message us on Facebook or Instagram. I did want to note that Primary Arms was nice enough to send this to me for testing, review, and to show you guys on some video. They were also nice enough to extend an offer to our viewers. So if you guys want to use the link I'll put down below in the description, you can get uh, free shipping on this optic as well as a free QD mount. So if you use that link, again, free shipping, and you get a free ADM mount like I have or a free Midwest Industries QD mount. So both are awesome mounts. I've, I've heard good things about the Midwest Industries. Haven't used them yet personally. Um, I have the ADM, but from what I've heard, you know, the Midwest Industries is also good to go. So pick which one you want. You know, it's, a, it's an awesome deal. So helps the channel out and you can support the channel that way. So anyway, let's go do some shooting, enough talking. All right, we're back out here at 100 yards. Just gonna do some shooting here. I'm, I'm loading it up with uh, XM855 green tip steel core penetrator. I, I generally don't use this stuff, but uh, for the sake of the reticle and you know, using common ammunition, I'm gonna use it and we're probably gonna wreck this target, but I don't give a shit. So we're just gonna shoot it. So again, Mark 18, give you a quick rundown on it. T44, ACSS, of course, cloud defensive LCSS, which is our basically our tape switch mount for the Surefire ST01. Uh, or I should say ST07, I believe, tape switch mounts, Arasaka 300 series, um, 10.5 inch barrel, of course, Radian, 45 degrees safety selector here. I'm still kind of playing with that, seeing how I like it and everything, but um, seems to be solid so far. A lot of forward control stuff, and again, ARP for the time being. So this is a SB15 uh, from SB Tactical Brace. So that's the rundown on the gun. If you got any questions, Again, put them down below so let's get I'm gonna get the camera set up here we're gonna start at 100 and then uh, once we get back to probably 300 ish I'll bust out the, the uh, spotting cam 100 yards save some ammo so let's get let's get kicking back and let's go dust that quick and then we'll we'll shoot fresh paint 202 good enough 
know what? I am not even going to get out of the car. Get out of the car. I'm not even going to get out of this thing. We're just going to shoot. Um, I should probably move this. Try that. That'll probably work. So again, I'm not going to bust out the spot in the camera and the target cam until about 300. So again, it's 200 yards. Let's shoot some. Yep. Left right wind there. That white is actually surprisingly hard to see on the uh, the bean background. I think you'll see it better when we get back on the target cam. But um, I, I was shooting earlier with the TA31, which is the four power general, you know, RCL that you guys are probably familiar with. And um, that one is, that magnification definitely helps. There's something to be said there. Anyway, too easy. Let's go back to three, push it to five at the end. All right, here we are, 300 yards. Um, Mark 18, T44. I think I got enough ammo left from the first iteration of shooting. Um, I'm not using a bipod or anything. I've got this Hazard uh, Hazard 4 Plan B sling pack out here. Been using it. Been using this as my day pack for the last oh, couple months. Things have been built pretty tough, and you know I'm not gonna put a bipod on this thing ever. So why would I? you know, use one for any testing purposes. So again, just resting off a bag. See if we can't get some hits on here. Target's a little bit obscured by this hill I'm under. See if I can't get some elevation out of this bag. There we go, that's a little better. All right, we'll hold that on. Favor a little left because the wind. That seemed like it was straight right. I think we got some wind down there. That was a hit. Smoking it. All of, once I once you heard that first ting, every single one of those was a hit as far as I could tell. So 300 yards, man. I mean if you guys are over in the military, think about not saying I'm a good shooter. I'm not a great shooter, you know. I'm okay. Uh, think about how many people can't qualify on paper and even hit a 300 meter target one time. Now, granted, this is not quite 300 meters because we're talking about yards, but still, getting on, um, I was able to spot a miss and see that the wind was moving left to right and favor left edge a bit more, and then just start smoking that thing. So, the thing's awesome. It's not. It's not blooming too bad either. We're kind of in the shade here. Um, but bloom is good. It's not it's not overpowering right now. I'm not in the shade anymore. Getting a little bit more sun, which I did on purpose. Not blooming too bad, but I'm gonna cover it up a little bit so I can see my impacts or misses potentially. Go hot. Ooh, I think I held a little bit too much left on that one. That was a hit. We're holding off the left pretty good. That wind is, that wind sucks. Picked up there that last shot, but we still hit one. Hit. 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 Can't tell where these are hitting. It was a little left, I think. My fault. Yeah, so these are, I'm holding like a full man, if not a man and a half wide. So another 18, 18 plus inches off the left side. So it's kind of tough to be honest with you. But yeah, we're hitting them. I don't know where. Let's go give it a look. So down here at the target, 400 yards. Again, just kind of wanted to give everything a quick look. Um, we don't have as many center masses as I would like, but I think the biggest thing and the toughest thing anytime you get out here and start doing realistic shooting, if you've ever shot uh, in you know conditions like this, which again, I would consider realistic, wind really becomes a factor and having to hold off like over here really, really screws with your, your elevation holds a little bit because it's kind of, 
it doesn't screw with your hold, but it, it's hard to find a point of aim. Um, so that can kind of screw with where you're actually holding on the target. You'll see I've got a couple up here, um, which would be good center mass height. And then I've got a few down here, which are still, again, still good combat effective hits, but they're, they're low on the abdomen. Um, from punching the numbers, and make sure and shoot 400 again. Uh, I think we should be closer to spot on. I think these are probably more accurate uh, as far as elevation height goes than these, but I mean, we're getting hits on, so it's hard to complain. So let's go back to five. All right, moment of truth. Well, not moment of truth, but 500 yards this time. So uh, put a few more rounds in because we might need them. And let's get to see how well she does. So we got a little more shade. Still blooming a little bit, not too bad. I don't, I don't remember if I've talked about bloom on camera before. When, when we say bloom, uh, keep in mind the ACOGs illuminate uh, with no battery source, which is awesome. Um, but it can have its disadvantages as well, just like everything. Uh, they illuminate from uh, fiber optics and tritium. So the fiber optics is what you see on the outside here. It's kind of sucking light in from the outside. It can suck in too much light when it's really bright out and the, the illuminated portion can kind of get too bright in what we call bloom a bit and kind of uh, obscure more of the parts of the target that we would like. So when we're doing, you know, kind of precision shooting like this, um, try and try and keep that bloom to a minimum. Some guys leave an electrical tape these, you know, so. All right, let's see if we can't get a hit on it at 500 here. Be fun. Couldn't tell. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to uh, give more illumination. I'm going to vary my hold. Can you tell? Is that maybe right edge? Ooh, couldn't tell on that one either. Right, right. Is that a hit, maybe? Who's three left? Ooh, that was a hit. That was definitely a hit. No. <laughs> It held the same one that last one. <laughs> See, we can't find it again. Where is that hit? Ooh, I heard something there. Not sure it was a hit. That looked like it was right. That sounded like a hit, too. Mmm, good tell on the last one. Try another one here. I can't tell. I know we got a few hits on there. It's so hard to tell without a spotter. Um, I'm seeing, sometimes I see dirt kick up. Sometimes, like maybe one out of every six or seven shots, I'll see some dirt. But with the power level on something like this, which is, you know, it's only a one and a half power, it might as well be a red dot again. It's so hard to spot splash. Um, I was kind of favoring my wind hole, varying it around a little bit, kind of based off the, the feedback I was getting, which was not a whole lot. Um, the couple hits that I did get, I was holding some pretty crazy amount of wind, which I'll... If I'm gonna, I wanna double check, make sure we get some hits first, and then I'll tell you where I was holding for my wind, if we're even on. I, I think we got a few on there though. Ah, better slow down a little bit. <laughs> hey, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, 
So I don't know how many rounds we shot there. I really don't. Maybe like, well, let me look at my mag here. We didn't empty the mag, but, and I don't know if it was completely full. It probably has 10 rounds in it. So maybe we shot 20-ish, just guessing. So that's not too bad. I mean, okay, so we got one, two, three. So probably three hits on here at 500, which keep in mind, this is not a, uh, sorry, I want to make sure the camera's still running there. This is not a precision setup. You know, it's not designed to be. The, the 10 and a half inch barrel isn't. The optic isn't. Um, the ammo isn't. So there's a whole lot of things, um, not necessarily going against this, but, um, get out of the way there. <laughs> um, not necessarily going against this, but, you know, just aren't working in its favor. So the fact that we're able to do like a quick zero at 30, uh, go out and uh, shoot at 100, 200, 300, you know, out to 300 is easy. Um, 300 we were getting hits on right away. Um, we still had a little wind hold, which kind of surprised me. Uh, 400, kind of same thing. And, you know, 500 is really, really stretching it for the setup. But three hits on there, I'm pretty happy with that. That's not too bad. The I think the number one takeaway from this thing is that um, I was holding the elevation hold that the reticle was telling me to. So that tells me that not only is the reticle on, obviously, but my ballistic calculator is on. Uh, so when I did that kind of creative zero, we'll call it, uh, you know, everything's still lining up. You know, we're doing a, basically a, a dead hole from one a zero to 300, and then we're using the four and the 500 yard dots. So if you were to put this in a 16 inch barrel, like the reticle is designed to, it's gonna shoot lights out like they usually do. But with something like this, you know, not necessarily the case. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So elevation hole's not bad. So you can see here, let's see, you know, we're, we're within the center mass area. That wind, that wind was pretty crazy. So I, I forgot, I was gonna mention to you. So the wind I was holding was, and I'll roll in a picture of the reticle here, it was the horseshoe, you know, goes around and I was holding basically where the, the outer edge of the horseshoe uh, is next to the 500 yard mark. So several targets off the left side in order to get hits on here. So our wind is again, the biggest factor. You can probably hear it. So anyway, fun stuff. Just wanted to come out here and have fun with it and try it and hey, it works. So if you want the T844 ACSS and you want to throw it on a Mark 18 and probably even, I would say anything from probably a 10.3 inch to an 11.5 inch barrel, you know, get it, you know, punch your numbers. Even if you're using similar ammo, you're probably going to be on if you do a, a 30 slash 300 yard zero, kind of like I did, you're going to be on out to 500 yards with your holds. So get creative if you want to, or put it on a 16 inch barrel, like I said, and have fun with it. So like I said, if you want to use the links down below, you can get free shipping and a free QD mount with that. So PA was nice enough to hook us up with that. And I, sh I should say, hook you guys up, our viewers with that. So if you got any questions, uh, in the meantime, let me know. I got some more videos to shoot. So take you next time. Hit. Smoking it. All of, once I once you heard that first ping, every single one of those was a hit as far as I can tell. So 300 yards, man.